<laughs> Yo, what up? It's Roger from the Mascarilla Podcast. We did it first. New interviews every other week. Subscribe to the channel and follow at Mascarilla on Instagram and Twitter to keep up with my live streaming schedule where I'm playing your music on SoundCloud's Twitch. Today, we're back. We got Tia Corinne live from what looks like the Nickelodeon Studios. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Where are you right now? What's happening? I'm in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. This is where I am. Where I'm from. This is where I live, and uh, yeah, this is where I vibe out, man. Make a majority of my music here. Yeah, it looks like a very conducive place for uh, creativity. <laughs> yeah, except for this dead plant here. You know, I had to replace that. But you got to water the plants. <laughs> yeah, it's I, all the heat in here cooking up. It just killed it. I don't know. <laughs> how is the weather right now over there? Because in LA, it's pretty damn hot already. What We're in May, and it's already just full-blown summer. Yeah, it was, I just left from there, and it was feeling great. But then it rained, and I was like... Really? I don't even about. remember that. <laughs> yeah, it, it was brief, but I was just like, it's not supposed to rain here, but <laughs> it feels great here. Like, it literally yesterday, I wore, like, a tank top and, like, biker shorts. Like, it feels great. I love, I love what's in. It's beautiful. You know, I'm, I'm uh, from New York originally. I've been in L.A. for about seven years now, but a lot of people from where I'm from, they either went to college in North Carolina or people retired in North Carolina a lot. Like, I don't know why, like, this like the specific place where I'm from near Queens in New York, they love North Carolina. <laughs> That's so hilarious because a lot of people they like are from Queens, they are here. Like they're like, yeah. oh, I don't know why that here. what that obsession is about. But yeah, I mean North Carolina is cool, but it's almost like a place where especially if you grew up at, you wanna like just go venture out and then when you're ready to settle down and kind of just like buy a house, you know, get more bang for your buck type of thing and raise right. your kids when you come back. But it keeps me grounded, you know? Because I assume, I don't know anything about anything. I assume property taxes or, or something is cheaper in North Carolina than New York. But I have no fucking idea. I'm just a music <laughs> blogger. I'm not a real estate agent. But you're still <laughs> in North Carolina. You're saying most people, they want to leave. Why are you still there? Um, I mean, like, you know, this, like I said, this is where it keeps me grounded. This is where I, you know created all of this here and you know I have friends and just you know my my daughter has her thing going on and her dad's here my mom's okay. here and um you know when I travel to other places sometimes that energy is a little much and when I come here and I can like walk in my backyard and put my toes in the ground like this is just kind of what keeps me being me so um I think it would be cool for me to like have my own place in like LA and like in Atlanta just so when I visit I mm, have my own right. space I don't have to sage every time and pay OG <laughs> money <laughs> to like we can just be there and work. But I, I think I'm probably going to like end up staying here and just build a house on like some land and just be like, hey, I'm still in Winston. <laughs> that's the smart move. And that's the dream is to have the home base, but then to have a couple apartments spread out. You know, you said a lot. Yeah. Atlanta and maybe Paris and maybe Japan. No, Malibu. That's Malibu is that's my, yeah. that's like my personal dream is like one day if I stay in the music industry long enough, <laughs> when I'm 60 years old, I can have the smallest house. <laughs> and they go my way in there. Yeah. yeah, no, Malibu is definitely like, I'm going to have some place there. You know, I, I actually went camping in Malibu like a month ago, which I didn't even know was a thing. Cause I was like, how can you camp in Malibu? Like, but there's a beautiful campsite right on the beach. So if you're into camping, Leo Carrillo campground, it's fire. Leo Carrillo. Yeah. He was some <laughs> like old timey. It actually is a fire name. He was like an old timey actor or something. And uh -huh. I forget his story. He contributed to the parks or he, wait a second. Were you not scared? Because I'm, like, terrified of camping, but, like, I, I want to – that's, like, on my bucket list to, like, well, camp. Well, like. this is literally the perfect place for you to start because it's such a family <laughs> campground, and it's, like, on the PCH, and you're, like, a step away from the beach, and there's, like, that famous fish food place right down the block. Like, it's, like, the perfect starter. You're not, like, in the middle of nowhere. You're in beautiful Malibu. 
Okay. Because, no, it's always, like, with me when I do stuff, and uh, everybody else will do something, and I'll try to go and do the same thing, and something drastic will happen. They're like, well, this usually doesn't happen, but unfortunately, it's like... Well, so I'd, I'd be so scared, typically, like, there's not wolves and bears in Malibu, but I went camping, and there was a bear in my tent. <sighs> yeah. See? No. See? No. I will sell you further on this campground. They have a great store on the premises where there's like food and there's all the stuff you need and there's alcohol and there's white claws and there's cigarettes and there's blunt wraps. Like, Sounds like my house. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like such an LA camping experience. But anyway, enough about Malibu. You're in North Carolina. I did my research. I read that your parents... Your mom was into Queen and that side of things. And your dad was into like Tribe Called Quest and that side of things. How cool was it to grow up in such a cool music influence? Crazy setting? cool. Because like I knew almost every song, like old school and like just 90s pop and just everything. And people are like, how do you know that song? I'm like, I don't know the name of it and I don't know who sung it. But I know it because my mom would be cleaning the house or, you know, taking me to my friend's house and this type of music. And uh, same thing with my dad. He'd be, like, popping and locking to drop me off at school. And I'd be like, stop. <laughs> so, I don't know. It's crazy because it's, like, that's exactly what my sound is. Like, a mixture of both. It's just, like, that is the best music. Like, it always gave me, like, it's just, like, a like feel-good music. And so that's kind of, like, what I base my music on. Like, I talk about things that I go through or I see my friends go through. But the ultimate thing is to make it's, like, I put my, like, soul and music so that it feels good because i feel like i'm a like a feel good person like a lot of people like to be around me because it's like oh you just make me feel good like just i don't know and that's so, for sure the vibe that i'm getting right yeah. now especially with like the room you're in the background i, I feel great i was kind of tired it, it's it's a little early but you really just got me feeling fucking great <laughs> good i like that are do you like you subscribe to the theory that like oh, I was born in the wrong generation and my parents grew up on great music and we don't have great music or films. Or do you see the beauty in the present? No, I see the beauty in the present. You know, like, it's I'm here for a reason why I'm here. Like, you know, yeah. uh, but definitely I'm, all, I'm always a little jealous. Like, dang, I wish I could experience that because it just seems so crazy and organic and just like, I don't know, just different, you know, just just thinking about not like having cell phones that's just, it's crazy like yeah that time like they they were going crazy like i always <laughs> wanted wanted to know like like how it would be to like live in that time but i i definitely think that um you know i embrace the time that i'm in and um what i grew up in because honestly like if if i did it i don't even know if i'd be making music or if my sound would be like this right so like, it's all part of the plan I mean, granted, we are speaking over Zoom, and I do run a website and a podcast and a Twitch for a living. However, with that being said, I'm on the same page. It would be interesting to live without the internet. It feels yeah. like you can be way more unique. If that's the one thing I'll say is like, I'm so like, always about the future and always about the present. And I think we're in the best time ever. And in 10 years, we're going to look back on this time like, oh, I wish we could go back. However, if there's a time where before the internet, I feel like you're, maybe you can be a little more unique because you're not following the trends as closely in your face every single second of the day. Exactly. Exactly. And I feel like people just will be more so like themselves instead of like trying to be like, you know, my body needs to be this and just so right. like self-conscious about everything and, you know, not just doing what you do, you know, just, yeah. you just do stuff just because. Speaking, yeah. of, speaking of doing what you do, I mentioned before we started rolling, I think that sweater is fire. Where, oh, <laughs> where is the sweater from, by the way? We got it. It's actually out. from Dawes Kill. Oh, I, shit. I, yeah, I went to LA. I told you I was there and I was like shooting a video and I went in there and I was like, the sweater, I must have it. But it's just like, it just spoke to me. It was just like, buy me. Like, it just fits me. Like, yeah, it's like perfect. perfect vibes. Uh, you're going to see me in LA in a month and we're going to run into each other and we're going to be wearing the same sweater. 
Oh my god! <laughs> I'm gonna like rip it off your back. I don't think it fits <laughs> me as good, but I don't give a shit. It's so fire. <laughs> Thank um, you. Like, you. you have like a really you know unique and you sense of style, sense of music. You describe your music as, if I'm getting this right, anime trap. Yeah. Where does that? I mean, it seems very evident by looking at your room, but where does that come from? Where is that influence? Like, did you grow up on anime? Like, yeah. Well, about? you know, we all like watch Dragon Ball Z and like right. Sailor Moon and Pokemon and Yu Gi Oh a little bit. Yeah. Um, and so that's kind of like just that, you know, sneaking and watching stuff on Toonami. And um, <laughs> uh, I, had, I had hella Pokemon cards. Like, I had the deck. Like, I mean, the book. We, you know, I was yeah, going crazy. Yeah, you know. I, I love Pokemon, um, and then, you know, I started getting to, like, Inuyasha and, you know, Sailor Moon, and so that, I don't know, like, I think that's just my, um, my personality. The first school I went to was Tuskegee University, and the nickname people gave me was, uh, Tokyo Cinema, oh, Tokyo Cinema, because they're, like, you're so animated, and just, like, everybody always comments about how animated I am, so it's just, like, it, it go, it crossovers in my music, you just a bubbly, but then at the same time, I have this hardcore side, where it's, like, shut the fuck up, bitch, and then, like, <laughs> then, I was, like, I mean, I'm just saying, like, you know, so you got that thug in there, and so that's just, uh, and that comes from me, like, having an older brother listening to Gucci Man and right. Jewel Santana, and, right. you know, Cassidy, you know, just, so, like, that's just exactly what it is. It's like I have this anime bubbly fun bubblegum side and then I have this thugged out, trapped out, selling weed to your Korean. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what, niggas. I don't know. <laughs> when you were growing up and into anime, like, because now it's super on trend, but a little bit ago, it wasn't really. Did you have friends who were into anime like in high school or were you like the oddball out and people were like trying to make fun of you for being super in that world? yeah it was like so okay I was like kind of like one of those weird ones where I was like cool I was with the cool people but I was also cool with the nerds and cool yes, with the, you yes, know, people so yes. I'll be in my friends and they'll be like hey to you and I'm like what's up man I'll be talking to them and they're like why are you talking and they're weird I'm like no they're cool like you don't know them so like they always looked at me as weird anyway so yeah they definitely were like why are you watching this and they never wanted to watch with me so I kind of probably did like just only watch it with certain people but they definitely said i was weird because watching anime was not cool at that no, time it right. was just like what are you doing you're supposed to be watching bet <laughs> i was i was for sure that same exact person actually i i say that same example of like walking down the high school hallway and saying hi to someone and like my cool friends be like oh why are you friends with that weirdo uh but yeah, yeah. like I, I would get called out for like from my cool friends of like oh why are you wearing purple vans you know just dumb shit like yeah like, what? Like, like uh i don't know I because like i just like what i fucking like and leave me alone and yeah you know it seems like it's definitely working out for you at what point did music come into the picture i think i read that you've been making music forever uh you grew up playing the flute but like when did you actually like making full songs and uploading them like when did that happen um, so like, like I said, I had started off singing and then at like 16, I was, um, you know, I had a lot of guy friends and they would be like recording at their mom's house. And so, you know, I was just like, I, that, that time I was like a heavy smoker, like heavy, heavy. So I'm just sitting there high, like, man, let me try this shit. Like, let me try. And so they let me get in and it was like, it was easy. Like I just wrote something, my first little 16 bar. And then hearing my voice was like, oh my gosh. They're like, wow, you sound like somebody. And I'm like, yeah, I do. And, like, and I loved it. So from from then I practiced, but I really didn't drop my, I, I practiced for so long because I didn't like the way my rap voice sounded at first. It sounded kind of like very Trina, very eh, like, so I practiced mm -hmm. and curated this voice that I wanted for a while. And then I just practiced different flows and then I practiced singing so much so that I could mix both. So I practiced a long time. So I think I dropped my first song in like 2013. And it was so, oh my God. <laughs> I'd look at it now and I like cringe. I'm like, oh my God, I have to take this off. Everyone's like, no, you have to show the pro progress. Right, right. So it went from 2013 to like 2000. I dropped something again in 2018, which was Cabbage. And then right after that, I dropped Lotto. And that's when I blew up. So it was crazy. So how, I mean, 
a lot of those 2018 and you started uploading your music in 2013 that's a long five years and it seems like you started a family in that time i went to school, graduated. Went to school. how did you stay motivated to keep at it because most people start something and if they don't see results in six months they're like oh this is stupid i'm gonna try something else like why do oh, you well, keep they're, at they're, it they're not they were never passionate about it <laughs> you're passionate that's, about something it that's... doesn't matter if you stop or whatever you're just going to keep doing it because you like literally just cannot stop because you love mm -hmm. it so much like mm -hmm. nothing will ever stop so um i did get off the track for about two years you know I I got in a relationship and then um you know got pregnant and then afterwards you know I wasn't recording while I was pregnant and then after I got out it was he, it was like he didn't think that being a rapper should be like a goal it shouldn't be a dream like you're your mom you need to do this and do that and it was kind of like dang like you know kind of put me down a little bit and then one time uh the this guy his name is J.O. was like kind of where I started recording with at his mom's house. So he just kept hitting me up. He's like, yo, I went to a basketball game. He's like, yo, come to the house and record. And I was like, no, I don't think I'm doing that anymore. He's like, just come. And I was like, fine. So I came and I made my first song and I still had it. Like I still had it. And like, oh. it's just like, nah, I gotta keep going. Cause like, it just, it just like a flashback. It like woke me up and was like, you love this, remember? Like, wow. And then it went from there. And so um, I just was like, yeah, like, then my relationship went down here because I was like, fuck you. I'm going to rap and I'm going to go to school and I'm going to be a great mom. And it just wasn't with yes. that. And so then we, you know, we co-parent, whatever. It's cool. Went to school. I'm working. I'm being a mom. I'm, I'm doing shows. Like right after I'm changing my clothes at work. Like, you know, I'm just doing it. I'm literally just doing it because I love it so much. And it just made me so happy. Like just to be able to transfer over my life into, into this mic and just, making this song, this music that I haven't really heard. It's just like, it excited me to just challenge myself and make something different and better every day. It's crazy. Shout so out to you. Up. Thank God you fucking <laughs> stuck with it. You're smart. Uh, I, I don't, you know, shout out to the father of your child, but damn, that was some bad advice in that one moment. Well, it was, it was. He, he was just... <laughs> it's so funny now because i have this house and all these things and my daughter has like a big old pink mercedes and like it's just funny and now he he's over here just like dang, dang. <laughs> why did i tell you that like, yeah why was i like that i was like i don't know but you should have been all in the studio you know trying to produce your tracks trying to get in on this <laughs> you a role for your girl what you get <laughs> life but lesson it, it worked though it worked i think it was supposed to happen like that i mean and it seems like it motivated you to go even harder yeah listen it just like at first i didn't understand it and i was like it's just messed up but it literally is the reason why i'm right here so it's like that's life for you everything happens for a reason the bad the good it's all part of the story mm -hmm. gotta embrace it all Lotto was 2018, if I have my timeline correct. When you made that song, did you instantly know, like, you're in the studio, like, oh, this one might be something? Or was it one of those, is this randomly went on TikTok and I didn't expect it? Yeah, because, like, I made that song, like, my old apartment on my couch in the living room, like, you know. Wow. Uh, wow. Yeah, on, like, this crappy-ass mic. It was, like, $70. <laughs> <laughs> I uh <laughs> I didn't like it. I did not like that song. I was like, you know, I, my boyfriend was like, he picked the beat and he was like, we like I only laid a little bit down because I freestyled that part. Like the I don't give a fuck. I was about to get in the shower one day and it just came to me and I ran in there. I was like, listen to this. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> and he was like, that's hard as fuck. He was like, that's all you got. I was like, yeah. And then I ran back and got in the shower. And then like I recorded that little part and he was like, I thought you, I told you to like finish it. And I was like, well, that's all I had. So we went to American Deli and we listened to the song on the way there. And I was like, this is, I don't know what this is. And he's like, this shit hard. And I was like, yeah. And so then I, we got back, I finished it, like kind of like freestyled it. And then afterward, I'm like, okay. I mean, I thought it was cool. And then I, I posted a few snippets just to figure out like, what should I drop next? Cause that, at that time it was very like, you know, you have to stay consistent. So right, um, right. I posted it. Everybody was like picking this snippet, finally dropped it. 
went crazy, dropped the video. That I I only had like four thousand followers at the time. So me getting seven wow. K in one day on a video was crazy to me. Like, what the hell? And then the glute this guy named Glucose Baby hit me up on Instagram. I was like, Hey, I, I posted a video um to your song on TikTok and it's going viral and I was like, oh, Okay, thanks. I didn't really like <laughs> I was just like, oh, Okay, thanks. Then he hit me up again and was like, No, you really need to go look like literally like it's like but people are making videos crazy 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 and i was like okay so i checked it out and it was like every day it was going up 20k 20k so like videos i'm like what the hell is going on like Damn. it was just so, so much bigger than me and then here the labels like call the email like, right. hey, like wow uh how did you do this tiktok thing i'm like i don't know i didn't do anything <laughs> because like 2018 is still early in the tiktok game it's pre Lil nas x so labels like the, the music industry now is almost split into like a post Lil Nas X world where they look for those kind of more instantly viral things and they're so keyed in on TikTok and everyone's pouring money into TikTok. But 2018, you were early on the wave. So labels, you're right, must have been hitting you up. And like, I'm just explaining it to the viewers of like, wait, how is this happening? What is TikTok? Who did this? So what was that process like of all these labels from when you have 4,000 followers, you put out this one song, and now labels are like, oh, you have the secret key, and we want yeah. you. And they're like, there's like, they're always like, it's so funny, everyone is like, it's almost like the Krabby Patty secret formula. They're like, oh. <laughs> I can just imagine on the other end, I'm like, so, how'd you do it? I'm like, do what? They're like, you know, TikTok, how'd you do it? I'm like, I don't know. I, don't, I could tell you, I was like, somebody just posted. And they're like, so you didn't like promo? I'm like, no, it's no secret formula. I didn't do anything. I just made a cool song that I guess had a cool audio. And, and I think that what it is is when people make an audio well, song and you can make multiple scenarios out of that one little audio mm. or some sound you make, that's just what makes it. That's just how you get on it I, I mean that's just from what i'm seeing because a lot of people they can do all these different videos to the same audio you know what i'm saying like they're right. creating a different picture off that same audio so it's just like it's just fun you know just to i don't know but yeah it was just funny like i was literally getting flown out just because you know you're like oh your song's going up then it started getting millions of streams started hitting a meal i've never hit a like you know i was like a meal like that's a me i'm like what yeah, the heck like, i don't got no team no manager like it's just me in winston-salem <laughs> it's like a, it's like a very appropriately titled song because it's like you're i'm sure you're like oh shit i just hit the lotto like what the yeah fuck? like for really real did. like everything changed from that moment yeah. and it was just like wow i'm really at interscope and i'm at this and these people are really like fighting over me right now it's just crazy so what yeah. so what ended up happening where'd you end up so I ended up with SCMG, which is uh, Arnold Taylor and, and Flip. So Flip is two C's manager and Arnold is the baby's manager. And so they like do their thing. And um, really it was like, you know, the labels were cool, but I learned so much with the business that even if like, even if you get signed, like you still have to do the work, you know? And it's like, you want to create leverage so that the contract, you know, benefits you. And not just them. And it was like I could have signed, but I could I could get way more money and way more better benefits if I just build myself up some more and really know what I'm talking about and what I'm doing. So that's why I was like, you know, they're they're not gonna go anywhere. They're gonna still right. want right. to sign me. So it's like, so I was like, let basically like artist development. Like let me get management and let me really have somebody invest in me more so that I can up the number and just really show them like, hey, this is what I'm doing on my own. What can you add on to this? And so, did you meet your manager because you're from North Carolina and he's also from there? Was it like um, a I think local I part of it? He, um, Arnold DM'd me. It was like, I'm watching you with the eyes. And I was like, what the fuck? You were like, I wait, like, what? Should I block this account? Like, oh, shit. Yeah. That's- <laughs> I went on his page. And I was like, who is this old man talking about? He watching me. Like, and like, so also, crazy. 2018 is before the baby was the baby. So. Yeah, it was, like, right before he was, like, going, blowing up, you know. So I, yeah. I'm looking, and I'm like, oh, it's the page manager. I'm like, okay, okay. I was like, okay, we'll keep watching, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and then I met Flip because, um, like, right before I met Flip, 2C, like, commented on my lotto video with the eyes. And I was just like. And so and, uh, I went to this event, and 2C saw me, and he tells his manager, he's like, I want to feature with her, make it happen. 
And I was wow. like, crazy. Okay. And so then he came over to me and then it just, we started talking. He's like, wait, I was just looking at your page last night. I was actually about to reach out to you. He's like, do you have a manager? And I was like, well, you know, just on my Arnold Taylor. He's like, I work with him. We literally managed to see. And I was like, wow. And it just went from there. Small world. The, yeah. s- the stars aligned on that one. Especially, Crazy. I don't know Arnold's full history, but you got in early with him. Because now, you know, he manages like the biggest rapper in the world. So Crazy. for sure hit the lotto on that one. I'm going to just keep running that dumb fucking joke into the ground. <laughs> At this point, it's just so true. Like, I definitely did. It just, like you said, the stars align. Like, that's why I'm saying. Like, everything that I went through and how I did it, it was meant to line up just like this. It was like, boom, boom, boom. Just crazy. You know, listening to Lotto now in the year 2021, <laughs> you definitely hear that a certain somebody was influenced by it. I'm always skeptical of these things. Because I'm like, sometimes it's a reach, but Drake's pop star is absolutely a thousand percent fucking influenced by, like, he took your flow. And (laughs) I'm a Drake fan. Like, I get it. Me too. Like, I'm not even like a hater, but it's like, and here's the thing I'll say to anyone who's skeptical is like, I don't know Drake fucking personally. But if you're a fan, you know he's such a rap nerd. And he's, like, always on something brand new. And he loves battle rap even. he's in, like, every part of, like, the world. There's – he absolutely heard your song. Like, that's not a stretch. Especially since oh, it's going viral. That. I mean, so, like – When was the I, first I, time that you heard Popstar? Where were you? Were you in your oh, car? Oh, were you on oh, your computer? Did someone send it to you? How did you hear it for the first time? So I literally had just woke up. I'm in the bed, okay? I get on yeah, every day, you know, I I work off my phone. So basically, I'll check my Twitter, I check my right. Instagram. Right. Get on Twitter, and I see all these tags. I see the pop star, and they're like, he took your flow. He took your flow. And I'm just like, wait, 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 wait. Everybody slow down. I see all the colors. He, like, jacked me. and I'm like, just calm down. Let me listen to this. So I'm listening to it. I'm like, okay. Then I hear, you know, I'm like, Oh, I'm no. like, hold on. You're like, wait, wait, I'm, like, let me check the credits, see if I have a writing credit on this song. And so I'm like, wait a second. So I go and listen to the song that I'm on where I do that verse, and I'm just like, huh. So I had one of my friends do a video of my part and his part so that, you know, you can hear the comparison. I'm just like, I ain't gonna lie. This does sound very familiar. Like, there's a part of that it just sounds so, it's like the cadence, the tone, just the, just, I'm like, what? And I'm like, it's not too far-fetched because one of his friends, like, follows me on Instagram, OVO Mark or something like that. And he, like, play, he had played me on Night Owl Radio one time or a few times before. Exactly. And so, and they just played Lotto on there, like, a couple of weeks ago. So, it's like, I know this. I know he's heard of me, like. He, are you heard. are you flattered? Are you a little mad? Do you wish he just remixed your song? Where do you stand on it now? That's a few years later. I mean, like, oh wait, it's I'm not a few years it. later, I guess, because right. the song just came out. So, right. right. Well, I'm not really. F, I wasn't really mad. I'm more so flattered. Like, okay, but it was. It would have been kind of nice to have a little. Like, I don't even know how he would even like shout me out because it just would be like, I think that was maybe could have been his way of just being like, I see maybe, yeah. I don't know, you know, but if there is that point to be made of like, it is very classic hip hop of like borrowing a line. It's like Jay-Z borrowed lines from Biggie. He borrowed a lot of lines from Biggie, but you know, that's the thing with Drake. It's either he's going to hop on your song and fucking take you to number one, or it's like a, fucking uh dram situation with like hotline bling where he kind of just takes <laughs> takes takes the whole song and never really it would be nice if he followed you on instagram you it, know at least something but you know i feel like i feel like you know maybe since i was a good sport that you know here soon he may he may hop on something he may remix on the minds or he may be like i, don't I know. can see I it happening like, i feel like i feel it coming i feel like i was a good sport i was cool about it 
and he sees me. They know me. Um, song is coming with Drake soon. Just remember this. Why did you wait until 2020 to put out your first EP is what the internet is telling me. I find it hard to believe you didn't put out an EP before that. Is this just like a marketing thing or did you really, is that your first EP? No, that's really my first EP. <laughs> really, wow. because like I prag- like I was just in this mode of like practicing because I wanted, I wanted every song to be like hit and I wanted every bar and line and every song to really hit like back to back and um I just practiced and stacked up for a while to until I felt like I was ready until I felt like like yeah I can this is actually very solid you know it's all the way me and um you know because I was getting forced at like with the lotto thing I was getting forced a lot to be like well let's just put out a tape and I'm like wait a second like this is me this is my stuff like I will put it out when I am ready I'm not done like practicing yet so you know what I mean so it was kind of like one of those things where I just I did it when I felt like I was ready I didn't feel like I was ready before but something in my body was like you're ready (laughs) and it happened you know that's like interesting too because was there a lot of remix because that's like also very classic music industry of like oh we gotta put out the remix now like did that ever happen so it's crazy because it just happened like the lottery is just happened. It's going to drop. Uh, I'm oh. dropping my deluxe next Friday. So it's going to be on the deluxe. It's going to well, be pretty crazy. Breaking news. Uh, tell me who's on it. Come on. Tell me who's yeah. on it. You get three guesses. Okay. The uh, baby. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck, man? <laughs> Should I stop guessing now? Uh, nope, keep on guessing. Okay, I'll just, I'll just stop guessing. Listen, I like work in the music industry, you know, uh, I got a good head on my shoulders. Um, I was actually planning on putting this podcast out just today, just dropping it the yeah. same day. But if you want, I can hold it until next week. Yeah, it's, it doesn't matter to me, honestly, okay. at this point. Um, I have a Discord, and I'm going to drop my track list on there early, just so, and it oh, has sorry. his name on it, so it just be like... Breaking fucking news, Mascarilla exclusive. The hard work pays off, baby. I got the exclusive. Um, and it's so crazy about that because everybody was asking me, like, are you going to do a song with him? Like, he's on the same team as you. Right. Like, you should get in with Miss Lotta. And I was like, you know, I don't want to force anything. Like, if he likes it, then cool, you know, whatever. And then it, I didn't even know this would happen. And, like, because I kept getting this question asked, like, all last year. And I'm like, we should. Cause, uh, and I'm like, I'm not going to force it. If he likes it, he likes it. He doesn't, whatever. Whoever likes it is going to, the perfect room is going to come along. And then I was, like, in a session in L.A., like, last month, and, um, my manager comes in, he like, grabs the ox on my, and so he starts playing, and I, he's playing my song, and I'm like, oh, he just wants to show off, you know, because we got the hardest song, whatever. And then I hear him come in immediately, and I'm like, oh, it was a what? surprise? Wow. <laughs> Shout out to Arnold, man, to coming through with that surprise. Crazy. I was like, what? I was like, oh, this is definitely going to change the game. Here's what I'll say. I'm going to shoehorn myself into this release plan. I do a little bit of marketing on my end, a little bit of digital marketing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You got to tease out this 30 second clip of you just saying he might be featured. I can edit it to where you don't confirm. And then all those rap pages on Instagram, like whatever rap Mm -hmm. TV, pick that up. And then later you tease out the photo with him or whatever. And then later you tease out the little snippet. You know, you got to juice this for every last yeah. part. So I'll That's send you a clip true. of this interview to post of just you. Yes. Like, and then, yeah, like, oh my God, is it. he featured or not? Yeah, no, do it. that will be so crazy. I love it. I love it. I love the clout. <laughs> very, very productive. I'm just, I'm now just chasing cloud on this podcast. Yeah, I love so, it. So, um, you have a lot of cosigns, though. So outside of this ginormous feature that I assume the song's going to end up on the fucking radio and stuff, people are already like, we're talking SZA, we're talking Bella, Bella Hadid is like listening to her music, like the biggest model in the world. How does this happen? I don't know. It's so crazy. I, I always ask myself, like, what, what did I do? Like, I don't know. Like, you know, so I was... When I saw the scissor thing, it was crazy because before her, it was Rico Nasty. And right. 
she was like, you know, on live, just like, not just playing a lot of like everything on my playlist. She's just painting, like she's like, and the singing the words, and then she kept doing videos for my music. I'm like, what the hell? Like, you just casually listen to my music. That's so freaking cool. And then it goes down the line, and I'm just like, I'm at the beach with my daughter, and I just wake up and I see some somebody always DMs me this stuff before I actually right, see it myself. Right. So I they sent, I see this video, and I'm like, okay, it's a lot since it's live, like. Cause you know, some people just send you pointless shit sometimes. It's like, what the fuck did you send me here for? <laughs> so I go on it and she's like doing this twerk move, whatever. And I'm like, I played it back like, wait, is somebody playing this song over this video? Oh, this is really her. And oh she was really God. like, and then, you know, we and her talked and she followed me. I followed, you know, I love since I was there every day. And I was like, what the fuck? And then she started like putting me in articles, like, you know, Tia Corinne, like wow. And so it's Rico doing it too. And then, Kenny Beats came along. Yeah, that was my next. You recorded with Kenny Beats last year. Yeah, like we have almost a whole tape together. Like oh. that is my guy. Yes. Like more I breaking love news. <laughs> yes. Yes. One of the songs that have been going like trending is actually dropping like next Friday on the Deluxe Suit. And literally everybody has been asking me for the song. Like yeah. people have made songs about me dropping it like They've made songs about you dropping the song <laughs> yes people have dm me and be like i hate tomorrow judy but like i need this song oh my like so God. i'll do it that's it takes. so like, crazy <laughs> mario judo you i can't believe he's already a verb i was just like it this you, this just happened like two weeks ago <laughs> like relax so i met him and we talked and he's like yeah actually i thought Rico put him on to me, and he's like, no, SZA put me on you. Wow. And he said, and then, like, Zach Fox also brought you in, too. He said he loves he loves your music. Like, he loves you. And I was like, what? And then he plays my song with Isaiah Rashad in the room, and Isaiah Rashad was like, what the fuck? This shit's fire. He hits me up, like, let's make a song. And then, you know, the Bella Hadid, like, I don't even know how she even heard my junk. And then that dude, Brent, Brent Man Rock, right. he, he's, like, a big – influencer i think big tiktoker mm -hmm. you know he has like 15 million followers or something like that you know he's like jump rope into my shit it's just like, <laughs> and so it's, yeah, I'm like, what the fuck? like how is this all happening i don't understand also like, I, can we just reiterate you're still not signed to a major label still not you have a distributor i assume but there's no major label yeah, I, I will. The, I did my uh, EP with Empire and then now um, Virgin Music and Caroline, they, yeah, the other, right, they're, right, they're going right. to be distributing my next project. So, yeah. So you're about to fall out. face first into a bag in about one week. You're going to have another everyone blowing up. Instead of your phone now, it will, will be your manager's phone. Right. Yes, it's gonna be literally. I, I like, and then just also that on top of performing at Rolling Loud, it's like, right? I like you said, the next eight months I'm about to be like, like, because I have all this, and I'm like, I don't have that many followers, so it's like, it's funny, but it's just like, people know me, like, they actually like, I'm, I'm like this, I'm like this far away from like actually. You're also, I mean, just from spending a half hour on Zoom with you, it's hard to not root for you. You, like, as you said, like, you have an infectious personality. You seem so positive. You've stuck with it since fucking, what, 2013, you said? Like, if anyone deserves to win, it's you. Thanks. So, Thanks. I feel like I've been patient enough. I've been, I've been going, doing it the right way, and my time is like, I feel it. Like I always tell myself before I even drop the song, I was like, I know I'm going to go big. It's like, I just, I can see it. I can feel it. But I, I, I always know because I have this like certain weird feeling and it's like, I feel it now. And it's like, it, it, everyone's like, why are you so nervous? And why are you so anxious? Cause it's this feeling. It's like, I, I know it, but I don't know when. And it gives me anxiety. It's like one day I'm just going to wake up and be like, what the fuck? <laughs> do you like, do you like, visualize things in the future of like i see myself holding a grammy or i know oh, yeah. i'm gonna I've be on the cover already. of the feather yeah i've had those already like those that's so raven moments and it's yeah, just like, right. I'm like what the fuck and it's i've seen stuff though like in the past like maybe like 2013 i had vision something and i was telling my friends i was like yeah i had never been to la before and i was like yeah i was I was like, I don't know what I just saw, but I was in LA and it's like this big old house with like everything was, you know, the big glass mirror house, like just, you know, whatever. And um, I think that was like, yeah, Chris Brown was there. And I was like, 
I don't know. That's all I have. And that kind of like low key happened. I was in <laughs> LA. <laughs> I was wow. in LA in this big old house with the big, like, you know, the, the whole house is almost like glass. Right. You know, those big glass right. window type things. And he was at the party. And I was like, wow. What the hell? <laughs> so, yeah, I see it all the time. I've seen myself getting, a, getting an award. And um, I see myself performing at Rolling Loud. And it's like now I'm performing at Rolling Loud. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> have you always had those visions or I've, or as you've put in the time and the years, they have like become more clear and more frequently? Or is it when you were 12, you saw it too? I was about to say, yeah, I, I always had those visions like when I was younger. Like, you know, when I first started singing, I, I saw myself being like, yeah, like just a art, like just being somebody. Like mm. I just... I've always had vision, even if it was something small, like nothing to do with music. I've always had like those deja vu like type of things, but they always happened. And it was always like, what the fuck? But I couldn't explain it because I was like, everybody's just going to think I'm weird. So I just kind of just embraced it and was like, I think I just know some shit. <laughs> and so, but the closer I get and the, you know, like the, all the work I'm putting in and it's like all these connections make sense now. And, you know, I just see it. And like I said, I really trust when I feel something and I feel it right now. And it's like, it's like what I can't, I can't, I don't know exactly what it, what it is, but I feel it. And it's so crazy. It's like, you're feeling it so strongly that it's radiating through my computer screen. And now I'm feeling it. Uh, I fully feel it for you and like I'm not even joking or exaggerating yeah it, uh, it makes you want to smile right it's just yeah, like I don't yeah, know yeah. <laughs> um yeah I can see it so clearly I uh, I do want to shoehorn in this question because I thought it was kind of cute on in my part uh <laughs> I read that <laughs> you grew up playing the flute the flute yeah. <laughs> on rap production it was in a couple years ago. It was all over the place on that future song, yada yada. When are we gonna get you playing the flute sampled on a beat that you're on? Oh my gosh. Uh it's just crazy. This has been a request for my mother for like so long. So I have to It's Mother's Day her. weekend. You should honor her this weekend. Get in the studio. You're already in the studio room right now. Lay down the flute. <laughs> Oh my god, it's so ridiculous. I just like <laughs> <laughs> I just cannot see myself like like <laughs> you, it like might go viral on like you like the video might go viral like end up on all the rap pages like Oh my god, it's like I'm gonna do it. I told my mom I told her I would do it, so I, I don't know when, but like I'm always the person of feeling, so it'll be saying, like one of those moments. A Mother's where, Day like, weekend. Oh, it might be fake. If I do it, I want to do like kind of like how I don't know if you ever seen like Tyler creating like little vlogs, but where he's in the you know those big studios where they actually have live instruments there and playing. Mm, right, I right, read right. they'd be like really jamming out, you know. Yeah, yeah. Like, but it don't happen. You leading a group of fifty musicians, and you're just standing yeah. in the front with your flute. Your flute. Like, let's go. That's incredible. <laughs> well, uh. Thank you so much for taking the time. I feel like I could talk to you forever, but I'm going to cut you the slack and not make this a four hour <laughs> podcast. Uh, you have a big week coming up. You're performing at Rolling Loud. What else is coming up in 2021? Uh, what's happening outside of that? Man, like I said, you know, I'm dropping this deluxe next week. Um, you know, I, I'm dropping a video too. So the song Luigi, well, it, I wanted to call it Terry Crews, but we couldn't because we're scared we we're going to get sued. Mm, yeah. And he's he seems like the guy who would sue. And that's I, I, I was so opposite. I was like, no, he seems cool. I mean, he was in high chicks. And they're like, <laughs> no, he's not, like, uh, he's not uh, 2021 Terry Crews. <laughs> yeah, they're like, no, he's a little, duh, we don't know. So, you know, we so now it's Luigi and, um, you know, Kenny got in the video. He's like, I don't like doing videos. Yeah, like, yeah, I get so anxiety. Good. Yeah, so he's actually like in it, in it, not just for two seconds. Like, we're like having a good time. And um, so I'm dropping that song, and the video also drops on Friday with the deluxe. So it's like, that's big. Big I feel week like, coming up. Yeah, I feel like that's that one will probably be my first M because um, Jason Joy Ride shot it, which is uh, Rico Nasty's video or one of her videos. And he like, Rick, no, Rick Lancaster, he's from Charlotte. He shot it, Jason edited it, and it looks fucking amazed like it's so next level of what i've been doing 
Um, you know, I'm shoot, I shot another video, probably gonna shoot another one. So I got videos dropping, you know, the deluxe, getting ready for Rolling Loud. And pretty much that's all I kind of have, but I feel like it's all of this is going to build on, build more things. So, you know, I don't even know what I'm looking forward to. That's why I'm so anxious. Cause it's just like, I'm just along for the ride at this point. I'm just doing my thing. <laughs> what are we, when I run into you in LA at the studio, cause we're in the same studio and you have a session and one of my artists has a session a year from now, speak yes. something into existence. We're doing it. I'm going to see you in the studio. No, it's but like what, thing. what is going to have happened in your life oh. in, in this year? Is it meeting Drake? Just speak it into it. Speak it out right now. Probably going to be real, like viral, iconic, you know, um, definitely probably have met Drake, probably working on a song. Um, we'll be just, I probably would have gone platinum maybe a few times, maybe at least once, gold, you know. Uh, I'll probably actually work my way into, like, this fashion thing and actually mm. doing, like, vo getting working on, uh, like, doing voiceovers and stuff like that. So at that point, I'm going to be, like, a hot commodity. Like, everybody's going to want a little bit of tea at And I'll probably yes. be almost able to be in Malibu. <laughs> yes, I will see you in Malibu, Tia Corinne. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. I'm so sincerely excited for you. You're about to have a crazy week a crazy year you're going to be on the charts very shortly follow her of course if you don't already follow me thank you -E. <laughs> there we go 